Six figures stood silhouetted against the curved horizon of Earth as the engines ignited. The shuttle, designed for the longest human voyage ever attempted, roared into the sky, leaving behind the world that bore them. Their destination, Proxima Centauri, B 4.24 light years away, the closest known exoplanet, long suspected to hold conditions favorable for life. The mission was the result of decades of international cooperation and breakthrough propulsion technology. A fusion drive, combined with solar sail boosters and AI-assisted navigation, allowed the journey to be completed in just under 16 Earth years. Time was compressed through cryogenic hibernation. The crew would sleep in cycles, waking periodically to maintain the ship and themselves, while an autonomous system kept them on course. The first few months passed in silence and calculation. Even in the vast nothingness, space had its way of reminding them they were fragile beings inside a shell of metal. Solar ocean storms tested the shielding. Micrometeoroid fragments punched tiny holes in external layers. Repair drones buzzed constantly, like bees tending a drifting hive. Then came the psychological toll. The first cryocycle ended with one crew member refusing to re-enter stasis. The isolation gnawed at their mind. There was no horizon, no sunrise only endless monitors and the heartbeat of machinery. That person was eventually sedated and preserved again, but it was a reminder. They were still human, still vulnerable. By the time they approached the Alpha Centauri system, the ship began to slow using magnetic brakes interacting with interstellar plasma. And then, finally, the glow. Proxima Centauri, a red dwarf, shimmered like a ruby in the void. Smaller and dimmer than Earth's sun, it painted the ship's interior with an eerie, warm glow-like twilight frozen in time. Orbiting the star was Proxima b, the planet that had sparked a thousand theories. It had been spotted wobbling subtly through telescopes, its atmospheric signatures only hinted at. Now, for the first time, human eyes would see it. As they drew closer, a thin atmosphere was confirmed. Clouds of water vapor curled around a dark surface, and faint auroras shimmered across the poles. Instruments detected geothermal activity and stable surface temperatures in the Terminator zone, the narrow strip between the scorching day side and the frozen night. Landing was tense. The planet's gravity was slightly stronger than Earth's, and the surface was rocky, pocked with impact craters and strange mineral formations. The shuttle detached from the mothership and descended with thrusters flaring. Dust rose, swirling into spirals that danced like ghosts as they settled. The first step onto the alien soil was cautious. It was not dramatic, not heroic, just heavy and real. Each footstep kicked up fine gray dust that floated before drifting down in slow arcs. The horizon was low, the sky tinted orange pink. Winds whispered across jagged rocks, carrying scents no nose could decode. Shelters were erected quickly inflatable domes anchored with fusion batteries. Life support systems hummed to life. Then came the work. The planet revealed its secrets reluctantly. Soil samples showed strange magnetic properties. Microbial life might exist structures resembling fossilized bacteria were found in rock crevices near geothermal vents. Water was present in underground aquifers, detectable through radar mapping and heat imaging. There were signs of organic chemistry simple amino acids, carbon chains, perhaps formed through natural processes or something more, in the twilight zone of Proxima b. Everything seemed to exist on the edge of possibility. Gravity was heavier, light was dimmer, but life, in some primitive form, might be real. Despite their excitement, not all went smoothly. Communication with Earth, already delayed by years, became unreliable due to solar flares from Proxima Centauri. An AI probe sent to scout a nearby ridge failed to return. A seismic tremor shook their base, forcing recalibrations and evacuations, but none of it compared to the storm. On the 112th day, a magnetic storm erupted from the star. A wave of charged particles battered their instruments and corrupted data. Backup systems kicked in, but not before their biological samples were damaged. The crew huddled in radiation shelters, listening to the electric whine of overworked generators, knowing that this planet could kill them without warning. When the storm passed, the sky cleared. The red sun rose over the distant hills, casting shadows across alien rock. That's when they saw it. Atop a ridge, half buried in stone, was a structure knot, 
geological, but geometric. A formation of pillars in a circular pattern, too precise to be natural. Camera zoomed in. Surfaces reflected light in odd ways. Edges were too sharp, angles too consistent. The discovery sent tremors through every mind on board. Was it a trick of erosion? A forgotten probe from an earlier age? Or had something someone's world? A team approached cautiously. The terrain was treacherous, and the winds picked up again. As they reached the ridge, instruments went haywire magnetic fields surged, and audio picked up faint oscillations, like whispers carried across centuries. The formation was silent, unmoving, and cold. Yet, deep within, was a chamber. At its center, a black cube, smooth as obsidian, humming faintly. No writing. No markings only resonance. It was not technology as humanity knew it. No moving parts. No logic boards. Just presence. The crew stared, unsure if they were archaeologists or intruders. Every sensor they used failed to penetrate the cube. It absorbed energy, light, sound, and then, just once, it emitted a pulsy low-frequency vibration that reverberated through the bones of those nearby. One crew member reached out and touched it. No shock, no heat, just contact. And then came the vision. A flash not of light, but of thought. A series of images, like memories not their own. Swirling stars, collapsing suns, something vast and ancient watching civilizations rise and fall. A sense of time, not in years, but in epochs. And one message, not in words, but in certainty. You are not first. The contact ended. The cube remained still, as if satisfied. The crew retreated, stunned. None could explain what had happened. The experience had been individual, yet shared, private, yet collective. Over the following days, the planet seemed quieter. Instruments stopped malfunctioning. The weather stabilized. A strange calm enveloped the base. And then, the final signal from Earth arrived. Faint, distorted, but clear enough to decipher. Contact received, prepare for return. Earth awaits the answers. But the crew hesitated. Return? They stood beneath the pale red sky, the alien wind in their ears. Earth was home. But this place, this strange, whispering world was something more. It was a beginning. And as the red sun set for the thousandth time since their arrival, casting long shadows across the ancient formation, something beneath the surface stirred again. A faint glow in the cube's core flickered like an eye slowly waking. They had come to search for life, but what they found was legacy.